This one is lesson 25, um, a fraction as a percent. And if you remember, percents are always out of 100, so you can make any fraction a number out of 100. Um, in the first example, I see uh, three cars and two trucks. Sam says 50% of the vehicles are cars. Can you give three different reasons or models that either prove or disprove Sam's statement. So when we look at this, do we see 50% are cars? I know that's not true. 50% were cars and you would want three and three or you would want two and two of each. So how can we show that that um, is not true? So if I write cars to total, then I have three to five, three cars to the five total vehicles. We call this a part to whole ratio, okay? Um, so if I put it like a fraction, three to five, three is the part that's cars, and five is how many total vehicles there are. Could I make this a fraction out of 100? Sure, we could solve this cross products, multiply the two across we have, 3 times 100, 300, divide by 5, and I get 60 out of 100. So that would show, since 3 is the part that's cars out of 5, then that would be 60 that's cars out of 100. So that would equal 60% are cars. So that disproves, what was it, Sam? He thought 50% had to be cars. Um, another way to show that, uh, if he wanted 50% to be cars as a fraction, we know 50% would be 50 out of 100, because percents are always out of 100. And then if we know that the, the whole amount of vehicles was 5, that's how many total or whole vehicles are there, then what would be the part that would have to be cars if we wanted exactly 50%? Um, if we wanted the part to be cars at 50%, then how many actual cars would have to be up there? Well, if there's five total, and we know 50 is half of 100, what's half of five? That's 2.5, and there's more than 2.5. We actually have three cars there, so that kind of disproves it as well. Again, you could solve this cross products, 50 times 5, and then divide by 100 to get that. So that kind of shows, no, 50% are not cars. It's actually 60%. If I take it a step further, if 60% are cars, then what percent are trucks? It would be 40, because 60 and 40 make a total of 100. How is the fraction of cars related to the percent? So how is the fraction and the percent related? Let me move this up a little bit. Um, we had three that were cars out of five, which I'll call it the total or the whole amount, three to five, we can make that a percent, which is 60 out of 100. We just make this ratio or this fraction bigger, 60 to 100. So that's how they're related. 60% are cars, which is the same thing as three out of five. Use a model to prove that the fraction and percent are equivalent. So we, I would use the cross products model. Uh, 3 to 5 is the same thing as 60 to 100. Um, and when you use cross products, this equals 300. And then 5 times 60 also equals 300. And that shows they're equivalent. Um, we also know that 3 out of 5 and 60 out of 100 are the same. Um, anytime you have a number out of 100, that is your percent, so 60%. What other fractions or decimals also represent 60%? Well, we said 3 out of 5 is the same thing as 60% or 60 out of 100. What's another fraction or decimal we could use? Could you put 60 out of 100 and simplify that down and say, what about 6 out of 10? Those are all the same. That's like taking 3 fifths and doubling it or 60 out of 100 and making it 6 to 10. What if we double 6 to 10? Let's see, that'd be 12 to 20. Those are all the same. All of these fractions would be 60% because they're all equal to each other. The decimal form that equals 60%, the decimal would be 0 0.60, 60 hundredths. You should hear it and see it. And these two are related. Turn the page.
A survey was taken that asked participants whether or not they were happy with their job. An overall score was given. 300 of the participants were unhappy, while 7 of the participants were happy. So if I use something like 300 were unhappy, and then I'm going to use a different color, 700 were happy. So what I have, 700 that were happy. If I add that to the 300 that were unhappy, then how many total participants would there be? What's that, 1,000 total? Yeah. Give a part to whole. So part to whole. So whole would be like the total amount and one of these parts to it, right? Um, a part to whole fraction for comparing happy participants to the whole. And then write the part to whole fraction for unhappy participants. Um, and what percent were unhappy with their job. So let's kind of go with the happy people first. So happy I had used blue. So happy, what was it? 700 were happy. So the fraction is 700 out of how many total? 1,000. So I like to label it. 700 was the part that was happy out of the 1,000 that would be like the total amount of people. Okay, but what percent is that? Well, we have 700 out of 1,000, and remember percents are out of 100. So can we make this a number out of 100? And some people see it, oh, I could have just taken this number and divided by 10 to make it smaller, and I could divide this by 10 to make it smaller. That's 70 out of 100. So what percent is that? 70% are happy. Uh, could you solve this cross products? Yeah, 700 times 100. You get your answer and then divide by 1,000 and you still get 70. So that's the part to whole that we're happy. Then they want to know the same thing, but what's our fraction of unhappy people? So unhappy, we said, was 300. So 300 would be the part that were unhappy with their job out of how many total? And the total was still 1,000. But could we figure out what that would be out of 100? And why are we choosing out of 100? Because we wanted a percent, and a percent is out of 100. So uh, some of you see it, divide by 10, divide by 10. Could you solve cross products 300 times 100 on your calculator and then divide by 1,000? Sure. That leaves us 30 out of 100, which means 30% are unhappy. Some people could see that because if you remember 70 and 30, these two parts have to equal a total of 100%. So this is a fraction, part to whole, and, and our fraction wasn't out of 100. It was actually more than 100, but we could make it a number out of 100. Why did we choose out of 100? Because we wanted to know the percent, and a percent is a number out of 100. We're going to skip that model because we did cross products to show. Um, exercise one, this person claims that a score of 80% means that she answered four of the five problems correctly. So she thinks 80% means that she answered four out of five correctly. Um, and we're going to skip this picture. Is she correct? Why or why not? So do these two things, are they the same thing? Is basically what we're trying to figure out. So is four, which is the part she got correct, out of five, which would be like the total, four to five, that's a fraction, is that the same thing as 80%? Well, what's 80%? A percent is a number out of 100. So if they gave us 80%, is that the same thing as 80 out of 100? Can you make this fraction, four to five, the same thing as 80 to 100? If you solve cross products, four times 100, that's 400, divide by five, and I get 80, which is 80%. Yep. So was she correct? Yes. How did we model that? We modeled it with cross products. We took 4 to 5 is the same thing as 80 out of 100. It's just a bigger ratio. Why did we choose 100? Because it was a percent, and any percent we have is out of 100. How could you change your picture to make it easier for her to see why she is correct or incorrect? Um, you could flip that around. If you started with 80%, we know that as a fraction, that would be 80 out of 100. Does that simplify down to 4 to 5? And some people see, yeah, you could divide them by 20, and it simplifies down. 
Others say, well, does the, are those the same thing if I do cross products? Is 100 times 4, that's 400. Is 80 times 5 also 400? Yep. There's another way to show that those two are the exact same number. 80% is the same thing as 80 out of 100, which is the same thing as 4 out of 5 if you simplify it down. Turn the page.